Uh, good afternoon and good morning, and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're delighted to bring you a webinar today regarding uh, connecting online and mental health. Uh, to take you through this presentation, I'm joined by um, Harry and Ken and Tanya from Connected Canadians, uh, who are proven experts in the areas of technology. Uh, Connected Canadians is a nonprofit organization with a mandate to provide technology training and support freely to all Canadian seniors, fostering digital literacy skills and reducing isolation and loneliness. By 2030, their goal is for all Canadian seniors have access to free technology training and support. Through partnerships with retirement residences and senior serving organizations, they support older adults by providing tailored remote workshops and one-on-one -on -one training sessions, device donations and lending, as well as many other custom programs centered around entertainment and art. If you'd like more information on Connected Canadian Services or to schedule a one-to-one -one technology support session, their website and toll-free number has been shared in the chat box for you to record. As we move through the presentation, please feel to prop any questions you have into the chat. Uh, I've, been with, I've been on sessions before with Connected Canadians and they're very interactive. Um, so as I said, just any questions, comments, feedback, feel free to pop it in there. Now over to you, Harry. Thank you. Um, thanks for time for having me. Um, like Natasha mentioned, my name is Hori. I'm a volunteer here with Connected Canadians. Um, today we're gonna go over connecting online and mental health. Um, so essentially, the goal of today is to kind of talk through how um, how important personal connections are uh, connections are with respect to both physical as well as mental health, and how you can utilize some of the opportunities that have been thrown up today, um, you know, online and with the new digital environment that we see today. How you can utilize that and leverage that in order to build some of those physical connections um, or personal connections with people. Quick agenda overall: we'll kind of quickly go over just how to use Zoom. Um, from, a, from an interaction standpoint. What you might see on some of the slides might be slightly different than what you see today, given that it is a webinar, but the idea is to kind of go over some of the features that you can use on Zoom for interaction. Um, like Natasha mentioned, in general, we love to have these sessions be as informative and as interactive as possible. So feel free to drop things in the chat if you find things relatable, if you have questions, feel free to drop it in the chat. I'm more than happy to kind of pause anyway through, go through that and, and kind of answer things on topic. So you don't need to wait right till the end for questions or anything. So feel free to stay interacted um, and drop anything that you want in the chat. Um, next post that will kind of go over the relationship between sort of physical mental health and personal connection. We'll talk a little bit about what that means. What does that look like? What do studies show and how does it help? And then lastly, like I mentioned, we'll kind of go over how to connect digitally and how to use some of the opportunities that we see before us today to build some of those personal connections. Um, so first thing first, again, like, like I said, your interface today, given that it is a webinar, might be slightly different from what you would typically see on Zoom. Uh, but whenever you are in a Zoom meeting, um, these are some of the things that stay interactive in there. Um, and this is just, again, um, some help for future meetings as well to make sure that you have the ability to stay as interactive as possible and as engaged as possible in some of these meetings. Um, the reactions I find are a nice tool. It always helps speakers. It always helps them know kind of where you're at, where, whether you're okay with it, um, whether you're okay with the content or not. Um, but the one thing for today, obviously, is the chat function. I would love to see as many messages as possible because it's kind of weird just talking to myself in like and not see anything. So it'd be good to kind of know if it's going well, if you like what's going on, if you want something new, if you want something different, want me to speed up, slow down, anything in the chat, that'd be great. Um, also in the chat, just one thing that I do want to say is um, given that it is a webinar, you have two options. Um, thank you, Tanya. Um, given that it is a webinar, you have two options and the two box you'll see whether it goes directly to hosts and panelists or it goes to um, everyone. So whichever your preference is, hosts and panelists go to me and some of the other panelists that you saw today, everyone would go to everyone and that's tuning into the webinar just for context. Awesome, great to see you from Port Moody, Ken. Um, hope the weather's great out here. I'm based in Vancouver and it's officially summer um, from yesterday. So I'm very grateful for it because it's probably the two months where you get so, like the sunshine here. And it's beautiful. Anyway, so talking about kind of diving into personal connection and um, the connect the relationship between that and physical as well as mental health. So when we talk about connection specifically, obviously connection at the end of the day um, purely kind of looks at a feeling of trust and support between people, right? So it can be whether it can either be between individuals, whether that's friends, family, anyone in in your general social circle. It can be with communities, so you know, 
things like what we're doing today, um, you know, and or faith-based communities or organizations that you're a part of um, or volunteer communities that you're a part of, whatever might be the case. Um, and then the new one that we're seeing more and more of now is online. So obviously social media and so on, but there's also more and more opportunities to connect with people online and build communities online, um, as well as like build confidential circles online, right? So um, a lot of what we're going to talk about today is how do we use the new landscape to facilitate some of that. Um, and in general, at the end of the day, when it comes to connection, how much connection you need depends on you and depends on where you're at, right? So me, for example, on a personal level, I'm a fairly introverted person. So when it comes to connection, I have a few really close friends that I, that I talk a lot to. I do okay with like general kind of social interactions, but with respect to like really, really feeling connected, there's a really small like trust circle that I have. However, there are other people that that love being, you know, boisterous and out like extroverted and kind of talking to everyone and building more and more social circles. Um, and so how much you, how much connection you need depends on you. It also depends on where you're at in your life. Um, I recently kind of figured um, I was at a place like kind of before this job that I have right now where a lot of my social circle was coming from work. And I realized that that was a huge part of what I was looking for from work was that social circle and a friend circle at work that I could count on. Um, I realized that I was kind of growing up and I didn't necessarily look for that same level of interaction from the people at work. And that's when I switched to fully remote and, and it made a completely different kind of um, mark on what I was looking for when it came to personal connection. So obviously that changes to quite drastically depending on where you're at in your own life. Um, but speaking of kind of the relationship between connection and mental health, obviously, given that, you know, when you have people that you can trust and people that you can depend on, there's a high level of, you know, correlation between that and lowering your anxiety and depression. You have people that you trust, you have people that you can go to, you have a worry, you can obviously turn to someone, which helps you in moments of need, which helps you in moments of crisis, and it helps you from essentially not spiraling, right? So you have someone to turn to and you have someone to confide in. Um, and someone that can kind of pull you out when you need it. Um, it also significantly helps you improve your self-esteem as well as self-confidence. Like I mentioned before, I was fairly introverted, um, or still am, but when I realized that I could build some of those connections and kind of step out of my comfort zone and still go out and have like social networking calls, et cetera, et cetera, or do a presentation like this, like it did a really big um I saw a really big shift in my self-confidence and the way that I carried myself and the way that um, I looked at myself, right? So there's a huge connection between the level of connection that you have as well as your self-awareness and self-esteem and self-confidence. Um, and then the last one is your ability to empathize with people. The more people that you connect with, the more people that you're able to understand or build a, a rapport with, you're able to put yourself in their shoes and understand things from different perspectives, which I feel given everything that's happening in our social climate today is incredibly important, right? So whether it's, you know, um, people from diverse backgrounds, whether it's, whether that's race, et ethnicity, whatever it might be, I think that's incredibly important. And that comes from being able to build those personal connections with diverse people. And it increases your own ability to empathize and trust and cooperate and, and put yourself in other people's shoes, essentially. With respect to physical health itself, um, you know, connection at the end of the day, um, all of these positive mental um, health sort of impact that it has also then leads into positive physical health impacts, right? So if you're feeling better, you if you're, you know, in a mentally better space, chances are you're in a much better place physically as well as a result of it. You're, and, and that studies have obviously shown that. In general, with respect to connection and physical health, we've seen that you know, connections can, you know, strengthen your immune system, it reduces like inflammation, um, blood pressure, heart rate, etc, which again is tied to lower anxiety, lower depression that we spoke about in the previous slide. It also reduces the risk of dementia as well as lengthens your life um, expectancy. Because um, at the end of the day, like I, like I said before, if you're feeling much better, odds are you're doing much better from a physical standpoint as well. So there's, there's pretty close interaction between all three of these things. Um, a few things here that I wanted to quickly point out from, you know, what studies show and things like that. Um, the, the reason why I pull this up and I always like going through this is because some of it really helps shape perspective of how we look at it, right? So, um, for example, the one thing that stands out to me in this slide is like that, that third thing over here, like we all know how bad cigarettes are for your health, but 
when I when I read that being socially isolated reduces your lifespan in a way that compares to like smoking 15 cigarettes a day, it really helped pull, put things in perspective in terms of how important personal connection can be and 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 the impact that it can have on your own personal like physical life, right? So obviously from a mental standpoint, it's easier to kind of understand it and visualize it because you're feeling it, you, you feel it all the time. But to see the impact that it can have on the physical side of things was really interesting to me and kind of um, really spoke volumes about how big um, this is and how seriously we should take it. Um, we also realized that you know, studies also showed that individuals with stronger relationships had a 50% incre um, increased likelihood of survival in general. Obviously, a lot of these are tied together and kind of speak to the same thing. Um, but again, it was just really interesting to kind of um, put all of this, all of this stuff that we spoke about in the last few slides in context and look at it as these like really crisp, um, concise, you know, takeaways here. Um, typically, this is where we would do a group activity and I would have everyone kind of open up and, and chat and give me and share some of their experiences. But um, we're not going to do the first one about like, would you like some of these benefits? Because like, who would say no? But I'd love to see in the chat if we can talk a little bit about or if any of you can share from your personal experience, some of these benefits that might be most important to you, um, or you might be looking for specifically from this Point, um, and it would help me kind of structure the presentation as well and point to that uh, maybe in the rest of the slide. So if there's something specific that I spoke about that really stood out to you and it is something that you're really looking for, I'd love to see that in the chat. Uh, but the other thing too is like, I'd love to kind of hear anecdotes from you in terms of, you know, how personal connections have helped some of that if possible. Uh, whatever you're comfortable sharing, safe space. Um, again, if you don't want to send it to everyone, you can just send it to the host and panelists and that would just go to us. Um, and we won't take names, but whatever you're comfortable with, I'd love to see that in the chat if you wanted to type that in. I'm going to let everyone take a little bit of time and type that in as we go. Thanks, Natasha. Yeah, balancing is incredibly hard, especially given how chaotic everything is today. To be fair, Ken, like, I'm, I'm sure all of us volunteers also add to your stress. Um, oh, yeah. I find conflicting opinions on physical health. Like I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about physical health being fun. I just can never get myself to go to the gym and I always hate myself in the morning for that. Um, but it, it's great that you find it fun. Mental health. Perfect. But yeah, so yeah, just in general, a good, a good balance is kind of what we're looking for between kind of physical health benefits and mental health benefits. So I'll, I'll make sure to keep that in mind as we talk to, um, as well as um, wherever we can kind of focus a little bit more on mental health. Yes, voice. I also find that it kind of works the other way too. Like if you're able to take care of your mental health, that has a good impact on your physical health as well. Um, but yes, if you take care of physical health, that does have a great impact on your mental health. It, it's really symbiotic in nature in terms of what you're looking at. Um, all right, so just in general, kind of talking about connection and how it helps, and I'll, I'll make sure to kind of stress on some of the things that have come up in the chat here um, and make sure to tie it into what we're talking about. But in general, how connection helps and what are the different sort of, what are the different boxes that it takes for us, right? So the first one's acceptance. Um, Connecting with people helps you um, feel good about yourself. It, it, it's, a, it's a source of validation. Connecting with people, if you see that there's someone that, um, you know, is able to still form a personal connection with you, is able to kind of um, trust you for you, who you are and accept you for who you are, you have a better sense of acceptance of who you are, right? So it makes you feel a lot more confident when you're looking at yourself in the mirror because you know that you have people that like you the way you are, um, right? So... Um, and, and this could be, again, specific aspects about yourself, whether it's your sense of humor, whether it's the way that you carry yourself, whatever might be the case, but it does help you feel a lot more comfortable in your own skin when you do have personal connections that respect you for who you are and are around you, um, no matter what. The second one is safety and support. We spoke a little bit about this already, but I'll kind of touch on a couple of things here. 
um, when you do have people around you that you can express yourself to, um, that you trust, it obviously makes you feel a lot less isolated and a lot more secure, which again helps with your mental health because you know that there's people that you can turn to in your time of need. Um, if you're feeling bad about something, you can go to someone and unburden yourself, again, respecting their um, position and where they're at, but it helps you um, feel a lot less alone. But what it also helps with is reinforce that relationship. So the more and more you're able to do that, it actually strengthens that relationship even more. And so it's a, it's a real virtual circle if you're able to kind of do that and create that environment for yourself, right? So if you're able to trust someone enough to share something with them, the fact that you've been able to share that builds your trust in that person. So you're able to kind of reinforce that bond and keep um, going back and keep helping um, your own sense of, of connection as well as the other person's sense of connection, right? So um, one of the things that I like to keep in mind when we're talking through any of this is that what you're doing for yourself in terms of building that personal connection and feeling that sense of safety and that sense of acceptance and whatever else we might speak about, what's, what's beautiful about personal connection is that it's also happening for the other person in that relationship, right? Or for the other people in that relationship, whatever might be the case. So it's a real, you know, virtual circle and, and, and a feeling of real symbiosis there where everything kind of works together and everything is really pro positive, right? So, um, which, is, which is really nice to kind of see all of it kind of come together. The next thing is purpose. Um, when you're supporting others, it obviously gives you um, a huge sense of purpose. And anytime there's something larger than yourself, you feel a lot more positive about it. You feel a lot more energized to be able to take that on and do it. Um, it's one of the easiest ways to also feel good about yourself, right? So a lot of the times when, you know, when we do things like volunteering, et cetera, it, a lot of people often like, ask us cool like what do you get out of it? like what are you doing like there's a ton of your time what are you doing and the the hardest thing to explain is like how good you feel at the end of it right so um it it's generally a beautiful feeling and so when you can when you have that purpose when you have that ability to go out and help others and go out and do things that isn't for yourself it feels great um and it gives you a huge sense of motivation and boost to kind of continue doing that, right? And um, and it's a, if you can get to that, it's a great feeling to be able to get to that, right? So, um, you know, and 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 it it doesn't necessarily have to be at this massive scale where you're helping millions and millions of people. Like if you go out and help one person cross the road, you feel great about yourself and you feel great about the day. Um, and so it doesn't have it can be at any scale, and the joy that you feel is still the same, and and that's beautiful. Um, and so in general, having that sense of purpose or the sense of purpose that connection helps build in you is, is incredibly impactful from, especially a mental health standpoint, um, especially given today's climate with everything that's going on, it can be exhausting. It can be exhausting looking at wars and, and things that are happening, happening in other places and, and the disparity that, that you see around you, et cetera, et cetera. And it can feel really exhausting and it, you it's easy to go into this like existential thing of like, what is the point of any of this, right? And when you're able to feel that little sense of purpose, I can't speak enough to how big an impact that has on a person's mental health. Um, and, and that's from like personal experience. So um, it's incredible the level of um, positivity this can push into your own like psychological state when, you, when you're able to formulate it. Um, and so now we'll kind of go into a little bit of how to find these things. So we know what connections help with in terms of, you know, finding purpose, safety, support, acceptance. So where do you turn to? How do you find these connections and what do you do? Um, so the first thing is, and it might seem slightly counterintuitive where we're talking so much about like emotionally connecting with someone, but we're trying to be really like methodical and, and um, organized about it and systematic about it. So it might feel a little bit counterintuitive, but the first thing I would say is like to think about what type of relationship do you want to build? Um, so I spoke a little bit before about at different points in your life, you're looking for different things. Um, and so try and do a little bit of self-searching to figure out what are you looking for? Are you looking for someone that you want to, to be able to turn to for everything, no matter what? Are you looking for a best friend? Are you looking for, or are you looking for someone that you just want to hang out with once in a while? That you can go out and do something with, like someone that uh, a group of people that you can go to a movie with every Tuesday, whatever might be the case. 
Um, or do you want someone that you can physically hang out with? Or do you want someone that is going to be your, I mean, we spoke a little bit about physical health and how much I hate going to the gym. So do I want someone that's, uh, that will help me stay accountable, that I can go to the gym with every single day, that even when I really don't feel like doing it, the fact that they're there will make me accountable and will make me want to go do that, right? So that first step of trying to figure out what it is that you're looking for, um, or it could also not just be one person. It could be um, I'm new in a country and I, and I want to meet you know, people that like Manchester United and the pain that this club puts me through. Um, and I want to be able to find a group of people that I can share that with, like the highs as well as more often the lows. Um, so things like that. So what are you looking for? Um, the second piece is um, building on that, building on connections that you already have. And this is something that's so often neglected, especially given how, you know, fast paced things are and frantic we are, et cetera, et cetera. But we so often forget the connections that we already have. We're always looking for new. We're always looking for quick. We're always looking for the next thing um, that we forget that there's a whole bunch of people that we have connected with in the past that we probably in all likelihood haven't done a great job of actually staying in touch with or even deepening the connection with. Um, so can you build a quick activity weekly to, um, on your schedule to connect with a distant relative um, whether it's on social media, call, Zoom, whatever, what have you, once a week where you connect with someone that you haven't spoken with in a really long time. Um, and I find that it's, it's an incredibly fun exercise. It's uncomfortable at the beginning because you don't really know. But once you have a few of those, it, it's, it's something you started looking forward to because you, one, you hear from someone that you haven't spoken to in a really long time. You're able to, you know, learn more things about people that, you again haven't connected with and so they're probably in a field that you don't know about it or doing things that that are completely different and so it, it's a beautiful conversation you feel really good you feel nostalgic because you talk about old times and like you typically always talk about the good times and so things like that are always great it, and and it's if you do have the ability for it and and sort of the discipline for it i highly recommend you know start with monthly can we like once a month i'm going to call someone that i haven't spoken to in a really long time whether that's family, friends, an old neighbor, whoever. Um, and it'll be a beautiful conversation, I promise you. It'll be uncomfortable, but as you do it more and more, it'll be beautiful. Um, or the other thing too is like, don't put the burden all on yourself. Like trust the people around you and tell them what your intention is. So tell people around you that, hey, like I want to be closer. I want to connect more. I don't know where to begin, but I want to connect more. Um, and chances are they probably will figure out how to do it. And, and it's a shared effort and it makes things a lot easier. And even that saying of, hey, like, I don't know where to begin, but I would love to be more connected really helps establish that relationship and deepen that relationship. One, because you're being vulnerable and the other person respects that. But two, because the, you quickly realize that the worst thing that can happen is not really that bad. Um, and, and the likelihood of that happening is so infinitely small, especially if you know that person and they know you and they know where you're coming from. Um, we spoke about the last thing in terms of scheduling regular calls, but um, the one thing that I do want to state here is like the, the importance of those regular calls, never discount the importance of that for the other person on the line, right? Um, like I, I call my mom every day, for example. Um, I don't have anything at all to say in, in those calls, but I know how big an impact it has on her being like just me doing that small thing. Um, and so do that, do like schedule time in, be, be like really methodical about it. And, and like I said, it might feel counterintuitive to schedule it in while you're doing something that's personal connection and needs to be more um, exactly. And it's beautiful. Like, and, and I'm sure like Natasha, like, it, it does wonders for her every day, right? So um, don't don't discount what that means. And and again, it might feel counterintuitive to put time in in your calendar that's or on a set an alarm every day at seven forty five that rings saying call mom or whatever. But it 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 really helps build that relationship and makes it more and more authentic. It makes it um, it makes you feel a lot better to being able to do that for someone else. Um, the last thing here is, you know, 
turning an acquaintance into a friend. Um, a lot of times we also silo things and we kind of talk about things in, you know, um, things in um, different social circles. So these are the people that I hang out with at work. These are the people that I, you know, hang out with socially. These are the people that I will invite over and I'm really close to and whatever else. Don't necessarily always look at them in silos, right? So, so think of um, what can you do in terms of how do you turn an acquaintance into more of a friend? What can you do with them in terms of activities that helps build that connection with them, that helps them not just be an acquaintance, but actually a good friend that you can turn to, that you can do something with. Um, so always look at it as a, a more holistic picture as opposed to just like a really specific, okay, this person is boxed into this um, frame of reference. And so these are the only things that I'm gonna do with them, whatever might be the case. Um, and then finally, this like, when you build on the connections that you already have, it's such a huge bank of people that you don't even realize that you built that, um, you know, set of set of relationships with that you have so much more that you can explore there. Um, and then the last thing kind of following on that is talking about, um, you know, some of the things that we said are uncomfortable. Some of the things like you don't know where to begin. Some of them are weird, um, especially if like you're, you're not really sure where to start, what to do. Um, and you're scared. And, and as humans, we always think about like the worst case and that's all we fixate on instead of just going out and doing it. Um, and so what I'd suggest is to do things that have really low lift, right? So practice starting conversations in person or online. A really good tip if you're not um, really comfortable with like conversation or like initiating conversation is to try and talk to your cashier at your grocery store um, it's, it's odd. And again, like do this only when like your cashier is not bombarded with like 10 people in the line behind you, but, um, it's, it's a great conversation. Like you can, you can talk to them at any point of time. You can initiate and make small talk. Um, but you know that at any, any point of time, if you feel uncomfortable for you to end the conversation, all it takes is for you to pay and go. Right, so there's a really easy clock that you have for yourself. But if they're not too busy, you have the ability to strike that conversation and keep talking to them. Um, so it's a great place for you to practice small talk. Um, and like for me personally, like I I hated small talk. I didn't know how to do it. I wouldn't know how to talk about the weather. I wouldn't know like. And if you're in Vancouver, like the first thing that everyone asks you is like, oh, so do you like the weather? Do you, what is or and I guess it's a North American thing, but. I had no idea how to do that, right? And, and so practicing small talk was odd and weird and like it, it takes a lot. And so like little things like that help. Go talk to your cashier. Um, when you're in an Uber or a cab, like put your phone away and try and have a conversation with the, the cab driver uh, if they want to, um, or when you're in a line somewhere, whatever. So like things like that are low lift. You have nothing to lose. Like what's the worst that can happen there? Like, yeah, do like, I don't want to talk cool like okay you can go back to your phone or you can pay for your whatever and leave the cashier right so that's the worst thing that can happen and so that's not too bad um the other thing that i find is when you're on the road and you're passing people etc cetera, etc cetera, if you just purely smile at people that automatically automatically kind of lowers how scared you are about talking to strangers um and again i'm not saying go talk to every stranger out there but it automatically reduces your apprehension and your fixation on the worst thing that can happen. Um, so, you know, if, if you just smile at people, how terrifying people are when you don't know them and you want, need to talk to them or whatever, that reduces. And so as a result, it's easier for you to step into brand new conversations later when you don't know the other person. Um, so little things like that go a really long way. And so do, don't discount, um, you know, what, what, don't discount the impact of such small gestures that don't take a lot from you, but have massive impact on other things that you're looking to do. The other thing here is like, don't put any pressure on it. If you meet someone and you don't quite click, that's fine, move on, it's okay. And, and if you do find someone that you click with, irrespective of what they think, like it's okay to say that, like let them know you're having a great time. Um, and too often, like we don't like, I don't know why, like whether it's a, a macho thing or whether it's like a, a pride thing, like we just don't tell other people like how much we value them or how much 
you know, we respect whatever, or like, we're just having fun. Um, and so take the opportunity to do that. Like you never know when you won't get that opportunity. And so do that. Like if you find someone that you really click with, let them know and ask them, Hey, like, do you want to hang out again? Do you want to do something again? Do you want to do this again? Whatever. Um, and, and if you meet someone that you don't quite click with, obviously don't tell them, Hey, like I had a horrible time, but it's okay to move on. Like it's okay to kind of um, not put pressure on yourself and not feel like a bad person for whatever might be the case, right? So um, don't, again, just take away, don't put too much pressure on yourself to make every single thing work and make every single thing comfortable. And at the same time, take the opportunities that you get to let someone know how important they are or you know that you've had fun and that, that you click whatever might be the case. Um, and just kind of leaning more into where can you find these people and, and things like that. Um, take advantage of, of your community, right? So, you know, is there a new interest that you don't quite know? No one in your circle is kind of like really into that weird thing that you think is fun. Go out and find a community that does that, right? Um, and we'll talk a little bit about, about that and like how to do that digitally, but find a group of people that try that and that enjoy it. And that's a new circle for you to join. Um, or if you go out and meet someone at dinner, and even though it might be uncomfortable, go introduce yourself to a brand new person, um, or try and find a new, fi you know, physical fitness group. A lot of things you'll see are like I talk about physical fitness because I, I genuinely am bad at it, and and I like try and use this as a reminder for myself to try and do it as well. Um, but yeah, like find these people that are out there, um, and find groups because that will make it easier for you where you don't, you can just exist and be part of it and then slowly feel a lot more comfortable and you slowly feel like sharing more of yourself with them, right? So again, that lowers the pressure, that lowers um, the anxiety that you feel in, in that relationship because there's more people that are sharing that burden with you. Um, and, it, and it helps kind of make you still feel all of the things that we spoke about, acceptance, security, purpose, all of that. So just to kind of re recap, we, we spoke a little bit about how connection helps lower, you know, improve your mental health, improve your physical health, as well as some of the things that connection gives you in terms of acceptance, safety, um, and purpose. Um, again, if any of these stood out, I'd love to hear from you. Um, I hope the first answer here is yes. Um, if you if you deem that in, in where you're at in life right now, but I'd love to hear from you any of the things that we kind of said in terms of like tips or advice, et cetera, stood out. Um, I know that there was a lot about like the mom, uh, about my thing of talking to mom. Uh, I'm really sorry to hear that, Mary. But hopefully like if there was anything that really stood out, I'd love to kind of hear from you um, about that in the chat. Or if you have any other cool tips um, that, that are great to kind of try out. Um, I, for one, know that I would love any tips at all that would make kind of conversation less awkward. Um, and as someone that isn't incredibly fond of going out and talking to a bunch of people, like I'd love any tips at all that would help me improve that and make me step out of my comfort zone a little bit. So yeah, feel free to drop any ideas in the chat um, of things that stood out or ideas that you have. Um, and now we'll kind of go into how do we use all the opportunity that we have in the digital world um, to make these connections, right? So we spoke a lot about the importance of personal connections. We spoke a little bit about um, how to find these connections and, you know, where do we start and what do we look for, et cetera, et cetera. But let's see how we can um, use the digital world to do that, right? And Natasha, to your point of making time for friends you can't see in person, hopefully this, this stuff around how to use the digital environment helps with that. Um, so the first one is obviously social media. Now, social media is like today, this weird topic of, oh, do we like social media? Is it bad? Is it good? Is it, where, where do we stand on it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all of those like conversations aside, in terms of what social media was built for, which was the know more about friends and family and all of the other problems about it aside, I still think social media is a great place for you to be able to stay in touch and know what's going on in someone's life, right? Did your friend have a kid? Um, did, is it your friend's birthday? Um, one of the, like, the smallest low lift things that I find is, um, I did this exercise a little while ago. I'm not on social media anymore, 
But before getting off of Facebook, what I did was I spent um, like 20 minutes literally getting birthdays of everyone on Facebook. Cause like Facebook was probably the last place that people put their birthdays out um, publicly. So I did this thing of going and finding everyone's birthday and putting it on my calendar. And, and it's great because like once a year you have an excuse to just reach out to someone and say like, and start a conversation, right? So people that you not spoken to in a really long time, it's a great excuse to just start chatting. And again, what's the worst that can happen? You say happy birthday, they say thank you and don't engage more. Cool, like that's not a bad thing. But best case, like you're able to reconnect with an old friend, you're able to reconnect with an old family, like a family member that you've not been in touch with, like whatever might be the case, right? So there are great things on there. Or on Facebook, did you see that, you know, an old colleague of yours had a kid, do you, you know, that's a great excuse to like reach out to them and talk to them, whatever. Um, so when you look at social media for what it was initially designed for, it's still a really beautiful tool to use um, in the way that it was initially structured to be used. Um, so again, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever is the easiest way to connect with people. Um, it's also a great way to understand, you know, their sensibility on things. Where are they at in their lives? Where, what are they, what's important to them? Um, and it's a great source of being able to talk to someone and build more conversation, right? So um, similar to a lot of what we're talking about here on the professional side of things, um, LinkedIn was, was this big place that um, a lot of people would share their opinions on things about, et cetera, et cetera. And, and every time before I met, went to meet someone for a coffee chat or anything, I look at what they spoke about. I look at what's important to them and use that as ways to have some of that conversation, right? So social media is a great tool if, if you are able to use it in the right way to those things. Um, it's also a great place to find community. Um, you know, there's a lot of Facebook groups for different things. There's lots of um, Twitter spaces now where they talk about different things. Um, and again, it's important to find the right community for you and don't put any, like if you don't like a community leave, like don't put pressure on it, but it's a great place to find more like-minded people. Um, do you, are you into, you know, cabaret at the Fox on Thursday and there's a community for that. Um, and, and there are more and more of these niche communities. It might not be a whole bunch of people, but really niche communities that are really engaged and really interactive. Um, there's also tools like Slack that you can use that have really spe specific communities for specific things, right? So, I mean, again, it's, it's a big thing on the professional side where there's like specific networks for, um, you know, product managers or marketing people, et cetera. But there are also Slack communities for people that are just interested in rock music in Vancouver. Um, there are Slack communities for that. I'd also recommend, you know, things like meetups.com. Um, they obviously have a focus on, you know, physically meeting, but they also do have communities that you can tune into and there are places that you can post and talk about and community walls, et cetera. So that'd be a great place if you're really into something specific for you to go out and find new people that are also into that, that may not already be in your circle. Um, the next one's obviously online calls. Um, so Natasha, to your point of people that you don't quite see in, in person anymore due to distance, this thing's like changed the game in terms of, um, you know, feeling that sense of connection. Again, you know, telephones have always existed and we've been able to call people, et cetera, et cetera. But that pure thing of being able to see the other person and see their house and see their dog and, and whatever, like it's, it's a beautiful feeling and a great sense of connection that you feel when you're able to see that person, right? So um, I, for, like, I stay in Vancouver alone, um, all my family's in India or in the US or wherever. And it's great to be able to like actually talk to them online and, and like look at their faces and like they get to see that, oh, you like, you haven't had a haircut in like four weeks, please go, otherwise I'm gonna disown you. And then I go out and get a haircut and whatever, like things like that. It's, it's a really simple way to have that connection. So it's, um, you know, something that I think has now been normalized given the pandemic, online calls and video calls, et cetera. And I think the, the level of connection that it helps you feel is incredible. And so it's something that I would highly recommend trying to do more and more of wherever comfortable, whatever you're able to do. Um, and at the same time, also like it's, it's little things, you're able to see their body language, you're able to see 
the other person smile, which invariably will make you smile. And then that helps, you know, just a positive conversation. Um, but it, it also like things like what we're doing today in terms of webinars, it's also facilitated being able to connect with communities online, right? So do you have a Dungeons and Dragons game night group that you can go to or an Among Us game night that you can go to that's a whole bunch of people that are talking or a book, book club online that people are talk about their favorite books at. Um, there's obviously things like, you know, let's all watch a movie together at the same time and we just chat and whatever. So there's so many opportunities that have been thrown up as a result of this. Obviously the pandemic was hard for everyone, but it also brought about so many possibilities and improvements and innovations that, that we do need to respect and, and, and admire and, and feel positive about to a certain extent. It also normalized a lot of things that before we weren't quite sure if we wanted to do it, right? So it did throw up a lot of opportunities that we'd be remiss if we didn't make use of. Um, yeah, yeah, neighborhood, perfect. Um, and then the last one's kind of exploring interest. So one of the one of the things that that I find is like a lot of us obviously use YouTube as a way to like watch videos, et cetera, et cetera. But what I've found is like a lot of YouTube communities get built in literally the comment section, right? So there are people that are that, that are, you know, hardcore fans of people, et cetera, of content creators, et cetera, et cetera. And you build small communities within just the content section, um, the comment section. And that's kind of fun, right? And, and it's a great way to like also connect with more people. So are you, if you're watching um, a video of a book review, leave your own thoughts about it in the comment section. Again, there's no pressure. No one might reply. That's the worst thing that can happen. It's okay. Or someone might reply and say, hey, like I thought the same you know, we should chat. And that's great. You, you found one other person that you can talk to about something that you enjoy or didn't enjoy, whatever might be the case. Um, and so, you know, leaving comments, again, not hateful, good, like positive messages is all we like kind of um, encourage, but it, it's a great way to kind of put yourself a little bit out there and find more people that might be like you. Again, I'm not saying the expectation is you put a comment and suddenly everyone's in your inbox trying to connect and whatever else, but you have a few people that could reach out. If not, you shared and put yourself out there a little bit. And the more that you do that, you feel more comfortable putting yourself out there and that will help with making connections on other sites. So, you know, embrace that and, and, and feel free and don't feel afraid to um, say what you think respectfully um, and in a positive manner, two things that you're watching. So whether that's, um, you know, YouTube comments, blogs that you read, blogs are a great place for micro communities because it's, it's such a central, like it's a such, it's such a small central ecosystem, right? So just the same people that kind of go to the blog. Um, and, and it's a great way to build a really niche community that um, is interested in a really specific thing or person or book or whatever might be the case. Um, and, and again, it obviously helps you feel a lot of that sense of community and um, connection. The last one's um, talking about games, um, which is sometimes kind of weird. Um, I've always been I've always been told stop wasting your time playing online games and playing games and, and whatever else. And um, one of the things now is like I'm recommending people go out and play games, um, especially the people that told me not to. Um, so it's, it's kind of a fun way how all that turned out. But in general. I find that playing online games is um, is a great way to connect with people, right? So um, a lot of games today, like whatever you're playing, all have like a chat function where you can talk to the other person and you're playing with random people online or you're playing with friends, whatever is the case. Um, so if you're going to, you know, chess.com and playing either with a friend or, or a random competitor, it's a great way to build a connection um, and someone that you can keep playing with after that if you're really into chess or Scrabble or Among Us or whatever might be the game that you want to play. Um, again, there, again, there's there's a plethora of games that you could be interested in. And the way that things are going today, a lot of a lot of these games and a lot of these things have communities behind them. Wordle is, yeah, that's a great example. It's another lovely game to build connection. Um, and I found that it's it's something that a lot of family members have used to like send each other 
images of, hey, I got it in three, I got it in two, I got it in four, whatever. Like it's, it's a beautiful conversation starter too. So, um, you know, don't, don't underestimate how, how big a role this can play. And it's a fun way to do it as well. Like you're having fun while doing it. It lowers the pressure. It lowers the anxiety that you feel when doing it. And it puts you in a place where you're a lot more comfortable in your own skin. So it, it can have a really big impact on the way that you're doing things. Um, again, no pressure in the chat. If you wanted to, I'd love to hear about, um, you know, any of these tips that kind of stood out to you, any of them that you'd be interested in testing, trying out yourself, or in general, if, you know, if you have any ideas of things that we haven't put on here, there's, there's so many options out there today of ways to connect and ways to do things. Um, I'd love to hear from you and some of the specific things that you found ex extremely useful in, in this new digital environment that we live in to make connections. Um, perfect. And yeah, in general, outside of that, that brings us to the end of our presentation. So if you have any questions that you want us to kind of talk about or anything that you want to say, feel free to type that in the chat. I'd be more than happy to go over it and or bring it up to everyone or answer a question if you might have one. Thanks, Harry. Looks like we have a pretty quiet group today. Hopefully everyone's just taking uh, everything in. Um, I do know that I took away a few things and probably should make a few more video calls um, because it's definitely hard to connect with people, especially when you have friends and family that move far away. So uh, thank you for that. Definitely setting reminders and all those good things I think are great because that's uh, such an important connection. Um, and thank you, Tanya. Thank you for putting that information in there on Connected Canadians. I think you just want to share a little bit of information at the end as well. Um, so I'll just turn it over to you for a moment in case we do have any additional questions. Yes. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to uh, point out our website that I just uh, posted in the chat. We have a free virtual fitness class happening this Monday, and I'd like to invite you all to join us. It's at 10 a.m. Uh, once you register for class, I'll send you a Zoom link as well as some more information. So we would love to see you there. Great. Thanks so much, Tanya, and thank you for popping that into the chat. So I'll just give everyone a moment to save that if they would like it. And uh, again, if you do have any other questions or comments, uh, feel free to visit the Connected Canadians website. That's it for this afternoon. So thank you so much for being here. We appreciate your time and uh, we'll see you again soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.